Welcome to the Nobody Guide to Life, where we provide tips and tools for personal growth, personal development, and your spiritual journey that you can use right now in your everyday life. Thank you for joining us. I'm J.A. Plosker, and we're glad to have you here. You can always find out more at nobodysview.com or thenobodybible.com, or you can check us out at Twitter and Facebook at Nobody's View. Our show notes are at nobodysview.com, and if you like what you hear, we'd welcome a subscription or a review. We'd appreciate it. When we take pictures, we capture a moment, or I guess when I take pictures, I usually capture my blurry finger, but when professionals do it, it can create art. Now you probably have thousands of pictures on your phone right now, but ask yourself, how many do you actually look at? There's probably only a handful that really means something to you. And, and sometimes if we're really lucky, maybe we capture something besides a single moment. Maybe it's something timeless. What if we could capture the essence of a person or a teaching? So my guest today, Greg Davis, tries to do just that. He's a photographer, an artist, and he's on a quest for meaning, a desire to connect his experiences with those of people worlds apart. Greg grew up in Texas where in 2000 he started a downhill slide, family deaths, a car crash, financial losses, a gang attack, a broken heart. So he sold everything. He left his tech sector job and he started a spiritual search that would lead him to a chance encounter in Vietnam with a local weaver and a point-and-shoot camera would change his life forever. Greg has gone on to travel the world, produce films, show his work, and publish in National Geographic, The New York Times, and many, many more places. There's so much more, and I think he is currently outside in a park in the wonderful fresh air joining us, so let's get to it. So thank you for joining us, Greg. Hey, what's going on, man? That, that, what a great introduction. Uh, you're really good at this, by the way. Oh, well. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? I've got to know him. <laughs> Thank you. That is your your bio is really quite unbelievable. And I, I've seen your work. I, I just let our listeners know. I actually for my listeners that are in the, the Simple Spirituality group on Facebook, I was looking for articles to post about inspirational things in spirituality. So I just hit Google and I wanted to see what the latest news was and an interview with you popped up. And I just clicked on it and happened to watch, and it was absolutely breathtaking. So I went over to gregdavisphotography.com and checked out your work, and it was just, it was just unbelievable. So I just, I just appreciate so much you being here with us. Well, that you know, that means the world. That's, kind of, I mean, I do this work for myself, but ultimately I do it to um, engage with others, to inspire others, to share with others. To, I mean, I, I get so much out of the engagement with other people. Uh, and the feedback that I get about the work, how it makes them feel, um, you know, what it inspires them to do, make changes or keep going forward. Um, so it's always awesome to hear someone's direct feedback, you know, that really, but, so thank you. Well, I would encourage, you know, and I'll just tell everyone, I don't, you know, I don't have a financial interest in your work or anything. I just found it. And I would encourage everyone to get over to gregdavisphotography.com as fast as possible to check out that work, it's, it's, it's really very special. And I, I, I you know, we, we talk about your bio and it really, is, it really is impressive from the sense that when I take a look at your work, I can really feel passion behind it. Take us back a little bit and fill in that bio for us. Can you tell us a little bit about the journey that led you, that led you to photography, that led you to this, to this artistry? You know, and, and sort of an ironic, setting here. I'm sitting under an oak tree um, looking at downtown Austin right on the lake on, on the river here and there's a statue of Stevie Ray Vaughan um, that's been erected in his honor yeah. and that man played from a place that um, was divine. I mean he was he was the muse uh, things are coming through him. He was he was connected with something greater than all of us. Uh, of course he had put in his time, he would put in his grit, he put in you know uh, and he had natural born talent, but he had that passion and drive and his music came from somewhere else. And there he is. I'm looking at him and it's, uh, you know, it's a beautiful moment. And I feel like I'm not saying I'm the Steve Ray Vaughan, in photography, <laughs> but, but I do understand what he was able to access. Um, I feel like that my my journey is is tapped into that same thing. And I believe that all of us are. I don't think it's you know, the, the, uh, me and Stevie are the only two out here. We're not. <laughs> Everyone has access to this. It's just finding it your way and being open to, and ultimately it comes down to trust. I mean, I, I lost so much trust in everything uh, around me 
uh, in 2000, I, I, so I was selling technology at a desk job for, oh, 15 years. I was a technology sales rep for Dell, for Hewlett Packard and Compaq. And I, that's just what I did. That's what I knew. Uh, I wasn't a photographer. I had been the high school newspaper photographer in 1987 and I shot film, uh, black and white, uh, a little bit of color, but mostly black and white, uh, had a dark at the school in high school. But, uh, as graduation approached, my dad says, Hey, what, what do you want to do, Greg? You're, you're about to graduate from high school. What's your ideas on where you want to head? And I said, you know, I, and I wasn't an early developer. I didn't really have a clue what I wanted to do. And I just kind of went, um, art school. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, no, nah, uh, what do you want to do? I was like, I, I thought in my head, I thought that's what I was telling him I wanted to do. But I was like, what, what would you like me to do? I mean, he goes, well, I want you to go to Baylor. I want you to get your business degree. And then when you graduate, you can do anything you want to do with that degree. And, you know, solid sound advice from a father, you know, right. with, with good intentions and heart in it. And uh, so that's what I did. I, I kind of put the camera down and went to school and ended up, I woke up 15 years later and I was at a desk job. Well, can I ask um, you a question? Can, let me ask you a question right there, because you mentioned that you were taking photographs in high school. Is that something that you... Because because we're talking about a journey, we're talking about that 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 trajectory of development. And was 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 photography something that you even felt a twinge of passion about at the time, or was it kind of was it kind of just something you picked up out of necessity, or or just because it was fun at the time? Yeah, you know, I hadn't developed my own sen sentiment sen sensibility towards my environment um, to really dial in and, and and to be one of those that those people that you see their work early and you're like, wow, they, they, he had it early, you know, he just right. had it. I did, that's not, that wasn't my work at all. Um, this was just an excuse to take pictures of the, the cheerleading squad basically. <laughs> and yeah, it really was. And it was a chance to go in the dark room for an hour a day and, and, uh, and escape from class, you know, right. to be able to go in there. And also the magic of, of, of film, of, of shooting film and right. getting to see that image come up and, you know, of course, get a few good ones here and there, but it really wasn't something that that uh, people were like, "Oh my God, this guy's got it." But I did have a, I did lean towards the arts. I mean, I I took, I was a pretty good artist. Draw, I drew a lot. Um, I did some sculpture, uh, some painting, and uh, I came from that. Honestly, my family has a lot of art kind of painted throughout okay. our history. So there, not, not, so that was part of your that was part of your experience growing up. A little bit. My grandmother painted. My they played piano. Uh, hmm. I had some musicians in my family. Um, so yeah, there was a little bit of of, of ex artistic expression in many forms and different forms. But none of them were doing it full time. It was all hobby based. Right. And so you put yep. that aside, and then you took that job in the tech sector. That's right. And uh, it you know tech was taken off in the nineties. I, I so the high school was eighty seven, and then I went to school, graduated ninety two. And then uh, around 94-ish, I got into the tech business and then right. woke up one day. I say I woke up. I mean, yeah, I woke up and realized that I had missed the turn. There was a Y in the road and I took the wrong turn, it right. felt like. Um, but it was also, there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, I had, in 2000, the first five months of 2000, so January to May, um, I had three family deaths. I had wow. my grandmother, my cousin got run over by an 18 wheeler. My dad had a stroke oh. and ulti ultimately died of, of, uh, of cancer. Wow. And yeah, I mean, bang, bang, bang. It was three in a row and, uh, yeah. it was hard. And then we got a second round, uh, three more passed. And in the next sort of like three years, next four years, we had three more die. His, my dad's sister, her husband, and another son of theirs wow. passed. So, uh, throw in, a. Uh, a dose of uh, a financial ruin a little bit. I made some pretty bad decisions with some finances and ended up on the short end of the stick. Um, I was attacked by a gang. Wow. Uh, that's a, that's a whole nother story. Um, I was whacked over the head with a bottle unprovoked and uh, fought my way out of it. But there was, wow. there was three of them on me, 11 of them total. Oh. And uh, ended up with 40 stitches in my head and neck and a real case of uh, anxiety and paranoia about it because wow. they they weren't caught and I was just completely attacked. So I'd never been completely attacked for no reason whatsoever. Wow. Uh, 
So, and then, then there was an infidelity with a girl. I mean, I was broken hearted. So I, I had no trust. I had no trust in, in God. He was taking away uh, the family. I had no trust in women I'd been cheated on. I had no uh, trust in the system it had stolen from me. And I had no trust in, in, um, in uh, people because they'd attacked me. So I was just at the end of the proverbial rope. Right. Um, and um, so at, at that time, drinking... Um, I say that it helped. I'm not sure that it did, but it, it seemed to quiet, quieten the mind enough to, to uh, get away from the demons that were all around me. Right. And uh, I got to a point where I, that was going the wrong direction, and, and I, I basically surrendered and begged and pleaded to that which is greater than us and said, look, you got to get in, engaged here and involved. This is, this is not looking good. How did you come back to that? Because you said you said that because I think one of the things is when we're talking about the spiritual journey, when we're talking about this journey of spiritual growth, we we can lose that faith in whatever we want to call it. And sometimes the loss of faith and the regaining of faith are so close. You can you can lose that faith on minute one and then on minute two, you're back asking for that help. How did that look in your life at that juncture when you had lost all that faith? How did you come back to the place where you could? approach uh, the universe or whatever again and, 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 and ask for that help? I feel like there was a surrender. I mean, I, I feel like I ultimately surrendered to it and asked and really asked for the guidance and trusted um, my intention and my intuition. And w- these things started happening, these God winks, I call them, these, these serendipitous moments, these coincidences, sort of like, oh, wow. You know, and 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 I wish I would have written them down and like you know made like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, but I didn't know at the time right. that this was going to happen and I don't, I'm, have a very short memory I don't I don't remember things very well and right. so as I look back on that people have asked me like what was it what what you know, I, you know I don't remember what it was I just remember I was ultimately like I was picking up breadcrumbs and just following those breadcrumbs and it felt right it felt like I was in the flow it felt uh, like I wasn't having to. Um, I don't want to say work because I was, but I wasn't having it. It was, it was go. I was going with the flow, and it felt like I was in the the right river. I, right. Mean, I was I was going with it. You said something so important, and I don't want to miss it. I, I, I the idea that on this path of of, of growth and of, of spirituality, it's so funny how that that growth is often in retrospect, right? At the time, yep. no matter how yep. mindful we are at the time we're so present in our moment that it's only years later sometimes that we see that it was really growth. And so that idea of being patient and going easy on yourself is, is really important. And then, so those things just started to kind of, th- the right things just started to happen to you at the right time. Is that kind of how you're framing that? Yeah. 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 I, I, and again, like what you just said, looking back, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees. You're, right. you're in the middle of the change, but the change is not, sometimes not just a light bulb and, and sometimes it is, but right. it, sometimes it's, it's, it's an evolution and it takes time to, to evolve and you have to trust where it's going. You have right. to trust that your intentions are, and your intuition, what you feel is, uh, and of course, grit. You got to work. You got to bust your butt. You know, you can't, you can't lay around on the couch and kind of get what you want unless that's what you want. Right. Uh, and that's okay. <laughs> you know, go for it. But yeah, you got to go take steps towards it. And, um, yeah, they all pointed me, all of these things sort of collectively pointed me to sell everything I own in, oh, let's see, 2004. Uh, and, and like in January 2004, I quit drinking. Um, I, was, I said, I'm going to give myself six months and just see what happens. And so I quit drinking and it got really clear. And that's when all of this stuff started happening. Right. I, I was back. I was reset back to me. Right. I mean, I like, you know, there's nothing better than a good party and there's nothing better than hanging out with friends and loosening up a little bit and all that. I get it. Um, but to completely not have that in your system, you know, you're basically fasting, if you will. Right. It's an alcoholic fast. I mean, um, I've got friends who've quit completely. I've right. got friends who stopped for six months and, and beautiful things have happened. So I'm, I say give it a shot. You know, it's really hard, but so is, you know, starting a workout regime or so is going training for a marathon or so is trying to read the bible all the way through or so is anything that you set your mind to is is you just got to start doing it and then it's day by day and it's a practice and so you know i i recommend anybody at least give it a shot it can't hurt you know and see if you can just see what happens see if you get clear i got clear well i had a teacher once say to us in a at a group teaching and he said 
when you're trying to start a new discipline like that, you're, you're going from nothing to something. And he said to us that that's a massive effort of creation. So, you know, that's why I always tell people, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're new to this journey, you don't, you don't have to leap into the darkness. You can just take a small step into the candlelight right around you. And because you, you were making a Herculean effort there to go from what you'd always done to something completely new. And I can't, I can't even imagine what that was like, especially after what you'd been through. Yeah. I, um, well, I was pushed in the water. I mean, it's like, you got to get in, you know? Right. So just, just there I go. And, and it was so obvious that I need to do this. This is what, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. I even, I mean, I even questioned it. So it's not like I was so like, okay, wow, this is perfect. And now my new life. Right. It, it there were questions, there right. were doubts, there were insecurities, there were times of stump, I was stumbled, you know, and, and, and I continue to stumble and that's all right. You know, Hey, we're, we're, we're human beings. We're, we're not, we're not perfect. Right. And, and, come to terms with that um i mean we are it can be argued that we are perfect you know um but hey you make your mistakes you stumble you question you keep doing it right and I, I remember being on that initial trip and and um sort of wondering you know nothing had really come to pass at that point i mean i was you know i, I started in turkey went through 14 countries and i remember that first country you know, there was a couple of photographs that, that turned out to be pretty nice. I mean, I, I was proud of myself for, for, for the photographs that I, that first, the, that first week, you know, and, but I wasn't really thinking, okay, I'm going to go do this. And then I'm going to, this, 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 this big, huge, massive change going to happen. I didn't actually have a clue that it was going to be as big as it has turned out to be. It's been a real blessing in my life to to be on this journey, to be representing this journey, to be able to share, to look back and share this with other people that what happened to me, I'm, I'm sort of a, a voice for, for opportunity, for hope. It feels like some days, you know, it's an honorable, uh, and I'm grateful in it, but really humbled by this, 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 this story that I get to, to share. And then the work, um, you know, and, and to be able to, 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 to carry that with through the work too. And that's really what it's all about for me is, is sharing. So what, what happened? What, what sort of pointed you out of the country? What took you from this place to say, all right, I'm going to pick up this camera and I'm just going to get that passport and hit the road. What was, what was that moment like or that series of moments? Well, it, I think the, the, the thing that really tipped the boat, if you will, was when I had two friends call me out of the blue. Um, they were engaged and they called and said, hey, Greg, we're thinking about going around the world for a year. Wow. Uh, what are you doing right now? What are you, where are you in your life? What's going on? And at that point, that was like it. That's exactly. That's all I needed to hear was that. <laughs> of all the things that were happening to me. And then they call out of the blue right. and say, well, we're going. So I was like, you know what? I'm in, I don't know. We, I don't know what y'all's plan is. I don't know, you know, where it goes from here, but I'm in, let's do this. Wow. And they were like, wow, that was easy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you had no idea the perfect timing that, of this this call and so um we loaded up and we spent the first four months together and it was nice sort of to have that that crutch if you will right. of having someone there just in case and and he liked it because he had his wife and just to have an extra male around just felt a little more safe for him and then for me socially i thought hey it's good it's a good crutch to have um and after four months you know that was enough and then we spent i spent eight months out on my own wow and uh and uh, that's really when the adventure kind of started for me. Yeah. So talk about that adventure. I got to see that picture of the hands um, that, yeah, that I'm sure you'll describe in a moment, that I hope you'll describe in a moment. Take us now, you're on your own. And it's sort of like a second letting go, because like you said, that crutch is now gone. And you said, well, that's it. That's enough. I'm going to go out on my own. What did that feel like? What did it feel like in that moment to turn your back on one adventure, did you have a plan for the new adventure or did you just kind of see where the road was taking you? I'm seeing where the road take, what was taking me. Yeah. I was, uh, this was 2004 ish, you know, um, guidebooks were really the way to go. There wasn't a whole, I mean, there's a little bit of the internet searches you could do right. in 04, but it wasn't really that available to you online. I mean, you could, and, and, the, and the speeds of the internet connections in some of these third world countries was very slow. So you could sit there all day and 
you know, not get a whole lot of information right. and facts. So it was a different type of travel. I'm really grateful that I got to experience it then when it was sort of a little more sacred, um, a little more hidden, you know, a little, a little less obvious in some cases than right. it is nowadays. But, uh, I remember, I remember the day that I walked away and, um, I walked away. There was a, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, um, how do I say this? I've never really mentioned this actually before. It wasn't a pleasant, I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bad breakup, if you will. Right. It was, uh, right. It was a respectful breakup, right. but it was time. It was time, you know, it was time for us to have our own, our own adventures. And right. I do, I do remember sort of letting, it's like letting a balloon go and there goes your, as a kid, there goes your balloon, you know, right. oh, I'm going to miss that balloon. Like, dang, right. you know, and you watch it all the way and you're like, okay, all right. And here I am all of a sudden <laughs> I'm in, I'm in India for the first time alone. Right. And, but you're never alone in India. I that's mean, that's a right. perfect, perfect place to, to be sort of dropped off, if you will. Right. Um, so yeah, it started from there and, and, um, and kind of went through, went through India. And then, then from that point flew right into, um, to Southeast Asia. And, uh, ultimately I made my way up to, um, actually I'll back up a second here. I flew into Asia on December the 20, I want to say the 26th or maybe it was the 25th, maybe it was Christmas day, day after, um, a friend of mine had left his job and had gone, gone east around the world. And I went, or I went east, he went west around the world. Right. We made plans to meet in Bangkok for Christmas hmm. lunch. Yeah, so that's what it was. I came in on Christmas Eve, and then the next day, um, I hop in a taxi, and I tell the taxi driver, I said, can you take me to the Hyatt? And he says, okay, sir. So he takes me to the Hyatt. So we're going to, to the Hyatt. So. We pull up in front of this hotel. I pay the guy. I get out. I walk up the stairs. Um, concierge there, and I can you tell me where the the restaurant or the you know the buffet is supposed to be? A, like an all-you-can-eat buffet here. And uh, so I go in, and there's hardly anybody in this restaurant. I look around. I look around the corners, and I go back out to the lady up front, and I said, "Excuse me, is, uh, is that the only place to eat in this hotel?" She said, "Yes, this is our our uh, our restaurant." I said, "Well." Is it, this is the Hyatt, right? <laughs> she said. She said, "Yeah, this is the H I A T T." Oh. And I said, "Oh, okay. Um, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you." <laughs> so went back out to the street and said, "Okay, so got me to. Can you take me to the Hyatt, the H Y A T T Hyatt?" <laughs> so that fateful little little um, mistake, if you will, on the part of the the taxi driver or my my mistake and not telling him H Y A T T. I made it late to lunch. Right. Well, when I, sh I'd have been, I'd, I'd been in India for a month. So I was literally starving to death and I'll show up and to, to the Hyatt Regency, right. You know, it, a massive, amazing multicultural international hotel. They have a, all you can eat buffet. And the buffet is like Mongolian barbecue and sushi from Japan and Mexican food. And I mean, it's all wow. over the world. So you can only imagine after being in India for a month <laughs> of eating very small amounts of food and always on the go and always on the run. I was just in heaven. So I showed up and my buddies, my buddies there and uh, I was running late, you know, I was, I was probably 45 minutes late and I got there and he said, Hey man, you know, Merry Christmas. We gave a hug. What's going on? He was about to finish with his plate and said, Hey, uh, I got a bus ticket to the South down to Koh PP down to the beaches. And I'm leaving in about an hour, Ugh. and I wanted to see if you wanted to go with me. I thought we were going to go together, you know, and I was like, dude. So I sat there for a second, and I looked at him, and I'm like, okay, I can leave with him in 15 minutes. Or I looked at this buffet later. Yeah, later on. So food saved me that day because what happened the next day, he, he got on the bus and made it to Co-PP. Next morning, boom, tsunami hit. Whoa. So, yeah, yeah, tsunami hit. So... I didn't realize what had happened because after my lunch, rather than go and meet him, I had three days until a friend of mine was showing up by bus takes, you know, pretty long day. And maybe I'd have like a day and a half and I would have to head right back to Bangkok to meet her. I said, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna, and I didn't talk to him or anything. I just, just, I said, I'll get in touch with you if I'm coming, you know? So I decided just to take a, a smaller trip to another Island on the Gulf side and ended up staying this, this little, little island and, and had a little you know hostel there and uh the next morning i woke up and 
all of the local people are crowded around the television sets mm. or the television set. There's normally only like one in a village. Right. So they're all surrounding this one TV. And, you know, I, I didn't know what to think. I, well, you know, it was in Thai and I saw a wave, saw some water, but you know, the, 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 the content wasn't that strong in the very beginning. You know, it wasn't, the media wasn't like right on it right then, especially foreign media. So I didn't really, wasn't that interested in it that first day. And then the second day, happened to check into my email and I had like 250 emails from people because I just sent out when I was leaving India. I'm leaving India. I'm heading to Thailand. I sent that out to all my friends and family back in America. And that's what they saw the last thing. And then two days, two or three days later, whatever it was, boom. Oh my God. So when I checked my email on that little island, I had, you know, 250 wow. emails. Oh my God. I hope you say so. You guys were closer to it here than I was, although I was right there on it. And I, I was really lucky not to have accepted his ride on that bus and instead decided for the all you can eat buffet. So wow. hallelujah to that, you know? Wow. Was he okay? He was, you know, okay. he's got a crazy story. He, uh, he's got a, an amazing story. Um, he went out on a boat that morning and I won't, I won't go into it too much, but he went out on a boat and, and a boatman was like coming back from the heavy water and was like, big, big water, big water in Thai, big water, big water. And Dave said he didn't know what he was yelling, but there were tourists inside the boat, like down, tucked down inside the boat and they were hauling butt. Um, yeah. And so they turned the boat around, literally went straight back to the beach, jumped out of the boat, ran up through the, 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 all the shops and everything, ran up to the high point of the hill and boom, this thing comes in and wow, white, just wipes wow. everything out, waxes everything. They come out, they come back down the hill and there's bodies everywhere. So his story is totally incredible. Wow. And uh, I mean, who's to say, I don't know what would have happened if, if I would have got on that bus right. with him and we would have hung out that night because we hadn't seen each other and we had probably, you know, had a big night and stayed up late and next morning we could have been laying there on that beach. And, right. I mean, who knows? Who wow. knows? I, I just, I don't know why things happen, but uh, they did happen. Wow. Day in a, in a good way, but God bless those people yes. over there. I had to go through that. So about that was, that was in December In March, I found myself in Vietnam, which March at that point was nine months into this one year trip around the world. Nine months is the cycle of birth. Well, I'm on a trail in the far North of Vietnam in a uh, village called Sapa and uh, Sapa's a, a lot of ethnic minorities, a lot of Hmong people still live in the area, and they all still dress in their traditional dress. So a black Hmong wears the dark black indigo with the pillbox hat and the embroidered earrings, and the red Hmong and the striped Hmong wear the stripes, you know. And so they all, you can kind of identify these particular tribes by their dress, um, particularly the older people, even the younger, even the younger girls when I was right. there, you know, um, all working the fields. It's all rice paddies, rice terraces on the side of this mountain. It's absolutely stunning. Well, one day I went for a hike and I uh, was kind of coming down into the valley. Sapa sits up a little bit high. I was coming down into the valley and there was a trail below me and there was a, a woman coming up from the bottom. And she was just in front of me as the trails merged and she was Black Hmong. Um, and as she's walking in front of me, maybe maybe, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 feet in front of me, I noticed that her hands, as she walked, one was blue, and then another one was green, and they would flash blue, green, as she walked yeah. in front. So I was like, wow, I've never seen a woman with a blue and a green mm -hmm. hand. So I, like, hustled, hustled up in front of her, or behind her, and I tapped her on the shoulder, and she turned around, startled, of course. You know, here I was, white man in the middle of this valley in right. Vietnam, and, you know, so I, I, I made myself smaller and backed away and, you know, with praying hands and, you know, namaste and, you know, hello. And I said, uh, with sign, um, ask her, you know, what was on her hands. And I got kind of pointed at my hands and she looked at her own hands. And I could see her trying to figure out how to tell this guy what's, what, what's going on with my hands. And she, uh, she made a motion of weaving. Right. And then she tapped her hands together and then she kind of put them, like she was putting them in, to her side, like she was putting them inside of like a, a vat or a bucket or something, you know, just, and then she kind of held them out, and I asked her if I could take a photograph of her hands. Or she kind of motioned, can I photograph? She's, she kind of looked at me like I was crazy. But I took this shot. I was just called to, to do that, and I photographed this woman's hands with indigo dye on her wow. hands from dyeing the yarn, ultimately 
it's a circle of life in, in this image. She, she, she plants the indigo seed. She harvests the indigo plant. She makes the dye from the indigo. She dyes the yarns. She weaves the blankets. She sells the blankets in the market to buy more seed and to provide for her family. And then she harvests the indigo again the wow. next year. So it's, uh, it's a very simple shot, but it's so significant. I can't, I mean, I, I've just seen so many people engage with this image um, emotionally. And, 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 and I'm not there like hammering them with the story right. either. It's just, and there it is. And of course, I'll share that story if anyone really wants to hear from you. I mean, you know, I'll, of course, I'm, it's, it's an honor for me to, to, to be able to tell it. Um, one of the coolest stories happened last year. Um, I, I show I live in Austin, Texas, and I show my work uh, at the Austin City Limits Music right, Festival right. every year, which is a huge international cultural festival. I mean, there's uh, 75,000 people a day for six days and uh, from all over the world. And me being a local artist, I've done it for, I think, 10, 10 or 11 years now. And um, this little boy, he's about five years old, was walking with his dad. They were holding hands and the little boy broke, broke with his father's hands and like beelined right into my, my space. Wow. And my space is like a 10 by 15 kind of tent, right. you know. And I had all these large pieces in there, and he beelines right in, and he's looking up at this image of this blue and this green hand, and just staring at it. And I watched the whole thing, like I, I watched the father kind of questioning brow, like, "What's my son doing? I don't understand. Where, where's he going?" And he walks over to him, and he leans over to him, and his son says something to the father, and the father looks at the piece, and he looks back down at the kid, and that's when I kind of leaned over a little, I kind of walked a step or two closer and leaned over. And uh, he said, well, it's $695 unframed, and it's $1,095 right. framed. And this kid's five, right? right? And he kind of, he, he, he drops his chin like, yes, like, okay, okay, bad. You know, he, he kind of does the head bob, kind of, yeah, okay. And he walks, and he kind of meanders and walks around the rest of the booth, and he must be going on this little journey in his head, like of all these places. And he finds himself over in the little small print area. Like, I have some small prints that are like $35 right. for small prints. And the dad's saying something to the son. And, and so I walk over and I said, hey, I just want you to know, I really appreciate you liking my piece. I go, I've got these small ones here. They're, they're $35, but I'll, I'll just, you can do it for half price. Like, I just appreciate you liking it, right. little guy. It's really cool. And his dad's like, no, 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 we'll pay, we'll pay full price if he wants it. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> I mean, I get it. T teaching his son a lesson. Right. Like, you know, I, it's none of my business, but um, I thought it was kind of cool. And so I said, well, just let me know, you know, if I can help you in any way. So I kind of stepped back a little bit. And I heard his dad say, well, you can have this, son, or you can have the T-shirt. <laughs> so you can have the artwork. And he's kind of going, the artwork? His dad doesn't get it yet. He's like, I, the artwork? Or we can get you that T-shirt over right. there. And this little guy points at the artwork, and his dad's like, okay. I'm like, yes. Uh, all right, we'll take this. <laughs> um, if you can ship it to us. And I said, well, I'll ship it to you, but I want to ship it to, to him. <laughs> I said, what's your name? He said, Finley. I said, hi, Finley. Um, what's your address? And he, he looked up at his dad, and he goes, uh, two, five. And his dad's crossing his arms, teaching his son another lesson, you know, like, what's our address, son? And he got through it, told me his address. And I said, well, um, would you like to hear the story about this piece? And so I, I, I told him the story to a five-year-old, a five -year -old, you know, right. that there's a plant, and the plant uh, is indigo, and it makes blue like your blue jeans. And you know, and this woman made blankets, you know, so made it, kept it simple for him. And um, his dad said, where is it? Where is it from? I said, it's from uh, northern Vietnam. And when I said that, the dad sort of like took a it kind of had a, a, a had a movement like he had an emotional sort of like trigger, like it sort of like jumped. Right. And I didn't really pay attention to it. I, I, I didn't really make anything of it. I, pay, I paid attention to it. I just didn't like say anything to him. I just remember it. And uh so I asked Finley, can I take a picture with you and the, and the piece that I want to mail to you? And so we took a little picture together and thank you. You know, they thought they started walking out and uh, the dad's kind of shaking his head a little bit like, wow. And he turns back around to me and he walks back to me and he says, man, I, I got to tell you, I got to share this with you. And I was like, wow, what's up? He goes, well, first of all, I've never seen my son like beeline towards anything <laughs> like that. Like, especially like a piece of artwork, like he's into video games and he's into, you know, football and baseball and. I just, I'm really shocked that he chose that over that. But then when you told us that story and you told us where that 
was from, he goes, I just want you to know that Finley, my son, is named after his grandfather. And his grandfather fought in the Vietnamese War. And his dad, his granddad, uh, his granddad just passed away last wow. year. Wow. He said, I don't know what this means. I'm not here to tell you anything. I'm just sharing with you uh, that there's something that something else is going on here. I don't really understand it. And so what do we know? Like, I mean, we're all part of our parents. We're all part of the same family. At the end of the day, we're all one, but we're part of our family. We carry DNA. We carry memories. We carry pain. We carry suffering. We carry happiness. We carry all these things from our families. And so his grandfather may have hypothetical, but it was the Vietnamese war. He probably saw some pretty major, uh, major things, um, that, that now that his father, his grandfather has passed, maybe he sent Finley into that tent to get that right. piece, to buy that piece so that now, because I know that I remember the artwork that I live with, that I grew up with. I remember the art. I mean, it was a big part of my life. So now Finley has the blanket weaver in his bedroom to remind him that, you know, Vietnam is a, is a place to not be afraid of. Right. Vietnam is a loving, giving, kind, gracious, grateful place to be, or whatever it conjures up in his head, but it's definitely not a a Vietnamese war photo. It's a it's a loving human humanity uh, uh, piece. So, I, you know, this kind of stuff happens all the time. It's crazy. I, I mean, I just it, I could tell you a million stories. Like that. Well, on but on that story, we're kind of closing up for this episode. But I want to ask you a question now. Based on the things we've talked about, what's a tip or tool from this amazing experience of photography? that you can offer listeners as something they can use right now on their journey of spiritual, personal growth, personal development? You need to ask. You need to ask. I mean, ultimately, it lives within. Um, I think ask and trust. I think really ask some, what it is that you yeah. want. Really define. Be clear about what it is that you want. And if you're not right now, that's okay. It's, it's okay. Wow. Um, mine was a little bit blurry. I mean, mine, <laughs> it was a little bit blurry. But it ended up being what I needed. But I did surrender and ask, and I did trust. I had to trust. And even though sometimes it gets a little bit wonky, a little sideways, stay the course and stay on path and, and continue to return back to that, that ask and that trust. And, and, and your purpose will be delivered ultimately, I think. I love that. And with that, that brings us to the end of this episode of the Nobody Guide to Life. Greg, thank you. Thank you so much You're for welcome. joining us. You're now, welcome. I just want to tell our listeners, this is not the end of Greg's story. We're actually going to have Greg back next week to take us on the next part of his journey, uh, his, his journey to India and some things he's got coming up. You, you really are going to want to tune in, and you can find his work right now at gregdavisphotography.com. And in the meantime, I want you to think about this. Take a picture this week. It, it could even be on your phone. But I want you to try to capture a real moment that means something to you. I, you know, maybe it's your mother posing with your child and maybe their hands are covered in dough or maybe it's your child laughing, but laughing when they don't know you have a camera. So we spend so much time capturing pictures. So this week, let's try to capture essence. I'd like to once again thank Greg Davis for joining us. Um, GregDavisPhotography.com. Uh, the link will be in our show notes at Nobody'sView.com. And remember, you can always find out more about what we're doing at Nobody'sView.com or the NobodyBible.com. Or you can reach out on Twitter and Facebook at Nobody's View. If you like what you hear on the podcast, please consider a review or a subscription. We'd really appreciate it. Keep practicing and have a good week.